Hey guys, I'm David, and if you follow the news, you might know that Apple Pay recently started here in Japan. And in fact, with the iPhone 7, you can now for the first time ride a train here with an iPhone, which is actually kind of a big deal. It's in fact such a big deal that if you go to big stations, you can see these massive big advertisements advertising Apple Pay now that want you to use it. So if you're asking yourself, should I use Apple Pay? Is it worth my time? Should I maybe just ignore it? Maybe this video can help you. Okay, first of all, we cannot talk about Apple Pay in Japan without talking about Suica. Suica is probably the reason why Apple Pay can even be successful in a country where you still mostly use cash for everything. It's in fact so important that Apple literally put a separate hardware chip into the iPhone just so you can use it and even presented it when they announced the new iPhone. So what is Suica? Suica are these little IC cards here that you mainly use for riding the train. You can put money on it and then you can spend that money that you have on it for riding the train. But this quickly became so popular that nowadays you can even go to a supermarket or in a convenience store and pay with it and use the money that you have on it for actually buying things. There are two problems with this card in my opinion. First of all, you still need to charge it. So what's the difference of actually buying something in a store with cash or using this card? Sure, you can say it's a little bit more convenient, but you still need to charge it before you can actually use it, which kind of defeats the purpose of not carrying your wallet, maybe just this card around. The second problem, which is not really a problem if you only live in Japan, is that these cards are Felica based. Felica is kind of compatible to NFC, but also not really. So sometimes you can use them with each other, sometimes not. And because of that, for example, the new Android phones, which all have NFC chips, could use an NFC card for some kind of functionality, but cannot use a Felica card, which is this. Does that make sense? But now with the new iPhone 7 actually having a physical Felica chip in the phone, it suddenly opens the door to all the things that are Felica based here in Japan, which are, well, a lot. But here's also where it gets even better, where with a physical Felica card, you still have to go to a store and charge it. With an iPhone, you can just click a few buttons and then you have new money on it. And this easy and especially fast recharge actually turns Suica into a viable payment option. On top of that, you can even buy a monthly pass directly through it, which is pretty convenient. But Suica is by far not the only Felica based payment system here. In fact, almost every big company that does something with money in some form or another has their own payment method. The most popular ones probably being QuickPay and ID. QuickPay and ID work fundamentally different than Suica, whereas with Suica, you actually have money on the card that you use for spending or riding the train. ID or quick pay are linked to your credit card. So if you have a credit card that supports it, you can just touch it at one of the terminals that supports it and pay without actually using your credit card. But this is also where it gets really cool because if you have a credit card that supports ID or quick pay and you put that card into Apple Pay, Apple Pay actually detects that and allows you to use it right from your phone. Hi, quick pay, Leona Yashima. Just going to stop. So to summarize, if you use Apple Pay in Japan, you don't just have access to Apple Pay, you have access to Suica, ID, QuickPay and Apple Pay right from your phone. To give you a hint on how good this actually is, if you go to a store usually and that store accepts a credit card, chances are that at least one of these other payment methods is accepted as well. The most popular one being, as I said, Suica, ID or QuickPay. So with the iPhone now supporting all of them at once, you can almost be sure that if you go to a store, you can pay with Apple Pay. And this is, in my opinion, really cool, because all of a sudden you don't have to carry around so much cash anymore. So if you're still unsure if you should actually try it, if you're a person that likes cash, maybe not try it. If you like cashless payments and you want to see a glimpse of the future and how we probably pay in 10 years everywhere, then definitely give it a try. In my opinion, it is extremely convenient and I'm very, very happy that it finally started here. So if you're still asking yourself whether you should try it or not, I think it comes down to this. Are you a person that uses cash more than cards? then maybe not use it. Are you a person like me who uses credit cards already anyway for most of the things? Then give it a try. I think it's extremely convenient and it also shows us how we probably pay in like 10 years or 20 years from now on. It's extremely convenient and just the advantages that it gives me are definitely worth trying it. So I hope this little overview over Apple Pay in Japan here helped some of you out there. If it did, let me know in the comments below. I'm very curious to hear what you have to say. And besides that, thank you guys for watching and hopefully see you in the next video. Bye bye.